first couple minutes or so of this thing, I always just get garbled up anyway. Okay guys, ready to hear a story? <laughs> First of all... Yes. Thank you. What is profiles? Oh! Oh snap! That's cool. Yeah, not apply. Is this new? I think it... Mm, I'm not sure. Anyway. Playing the game. Playing this on the PlayStation 4. Obviously. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. Okay. I thought I turned on subtitles. The fuck is with that? He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Okay, I won't be able to talk super a lot Ryan in this. Forms up under his feet as if pointing away. He don't stop to wonder why. Because of the narration, it's pretty constant throughout the game, and I don't want to talk his over it. Long friend, just lying in the road. Well, it's a touch and reunion. to his death. I'm just fooling. <laughs> God damn it. It's hard. Anyway, let's keep going. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. In the calamity. Undone, undone, undone. Dramatic echo. That a survivor. No, ma'am. It's a gas fella, forced out from underground. Kid Oosh. pops good. Fella got a piece of him, though. Must break the things. It just rages for a while. That's fucking narration's awesome. Oh god damn it. Keep fucking doing that. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods. Gotta hold her still to spin up the chamber. I have to break all the things. It's mandatory, not really, but it's mandatory for me. Plus He's he gets up money. Quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. Here we go. We got our Dark Souls Estus. <laughs> our blood vials. A school of squirts tunnels up around them. Oh Might shit. Fled here from the mines. Squirts! You fucking squirts, I wish they made plushies out of you, because I would buy them.
Look what I found. Kid found some memento from a girl he knew. Always used to fancy her. Suit. Oh no. Of the sentimental variety. Also holds hair firmly in check. Hardly a star. A uh, star. Ugh. Oh, squirts. Now we can progress. That wasn't mandatory. You can actually miss that. I missed it the first time I ever played this game. He sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous water. Inside's old Romney, the bartender. The calamity got him forced drinking too. <laughs> then Kid finds his trusty shield. One minute, shield. I'll get to you in a second. I must break the things. And eat the apples! Ah! Yeah, baby. But just as he's getting a handle on it, the security takes him for a petty thief. Clang. Shield saves his hide. You can kill... Oh, uh, yeah. These boxes have enemies in them, but you can... Turn it up for last call. But you can... Uh, if you can destroy them before they pop out, then... They'll die. And you won't have to fight him. More squirts start coming out of the woodwork. That's something I like. Uh, if you notice, I. A big old fella pops out in front of the kid. Oh shit! I gotta get back in the hang of this game. If you notice, uh, I had full water. What I, don't, I forget what it's called. I had full healing stuff. Kid sees the weight of the bastion out the window. It's a bit of a drop. Yeah, one minute. I uh, You can only have three, and when I picked... When I had full of them, and I picked one up, it automatically just healed up all my life. Which is something I wish Bloodborne did. Hello, bartender. Ronnie Goodbye. always wanted his ashes scattered here. That's something I wish Bloodborne did, when you pick up excess uh, blood vials, like, and you have low health, I wish it would automatically use them. He gets a good look at things on his way down. He lands on top of a breaker's bowl, <laughs> and it ain't broke. Just face plants. Bow is definitely one of my favorite weapons in the game. Kid spies a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. Ooh, string! The kid yeah! The a memento from a breaker, once the fastest man in the land. Meese gut. Meese hunting! The poor Meeses! Right, Boom. back at ya. <laughs> That's awesome. And the fucking narrator. The good news is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they aiming for the kid. I'm used to having the bow upgraded, and so the uh, the time for the because if you watch him glow, that means it's all fully charged. And if you let go of the button as soon as he's fully charged, that's a power shot. And you can get an upgrade that shortens the time. 
for how long it takes. And now we have drinks that let you do the super moves. Drinks are a bit of a- oh shit, at least they're aiming at the squirts along with us. Ow, fuck. You find the distillery right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. One sip of the spirits in that distillery and the kid will feel like a new man. Hope this isn't any underage drinking. Let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna go fetch and fizz. Just for now. Just so I can suck up the money. Where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. Yeah, I like the setup we got right now. Although... No, okay. Sometimes the narrator will have special... Ah! <laughs> I killed that squirt while falling down on it. Some of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. Why would we. Why would Salandia have that? Squirt birthers. Oh no. That one was Maud, the tutor. Once taught the kid good manners. He never used them though. <laughs> An old ferry barge sends the kid on his way. The bastion's real close now. Ow. Oh, this music. This game's got killer fucking music. Power shot. Now, uh, the cool thing about this game is it's got a fantastic story to it, but it's kind of a slow burn at first. As you'll notice, it's really gameplay heavy up front. Like, it has that narrator thing going for it, and that's, like, really fun. But the thing that kind of makes it special, the thing that separates it, doesn't really start happening until a couple hours in first couple levels, so to speak, are really, like, gameplay heavy. And that's a good thing. But, oh shit. But the thing is, like, if you're going into this game after hearing about all the hype and stuff, you might be like, oh, I don't see what the big deal is. But you gotta give it some time, and it really starts to show what it's got. Drops a scumbag of his last meal. There we go. Some out of his misery. Fuck off, squirts. Thank you very much. He finds the core to the wharf district. He steals the city's heart. Might as well. Kid has a 
feeling you better get a move on. <laughs> Place is starting to fall. And now, for some reason, I can't fall off the sides on my own. See that core kid took was the only thing making this particular rock stay afloat. Oh shit. Kinda gotta hurry up here. It just keeps running. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did anybody else survive? He finds me. We talk for a spell. There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest. Enough to point the way to the cores. Nacy. I try to let the kid down gently. This is the bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. All I tell him is to set that core is on the monument there. Then watch. Ain't always much to say. And just like that, the bastion comes alive. Starts growing again. Growing stronger. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. Now the bastion can send him even farther into the wild unknown. So how about that? We just got here, and immediately he's saying, get the fuck out and go find more cores. Uh, obviously, we're building the fucking bar. <laughs> First priority, get a drink. Sample spirits from my personal supply. Okay, we have a couple new ones here. And wear whiskey is actually a really game-breaking one, so we're going with that. As long as you're good at the game, which I'm not, <laughs> where whiskey can really fucking just destroy the balance. Where whiskey has no scent, but tastes like a peppered boot heel. It's not for everyone. Let's hear a couple more. Oh no, come on. Oh, oh well. It's only for new ones. Kid don't know what's out there waiting for him. The Skyway. Now the kid can ride the wind to distant land. Let's do one of the challenges first. I'm probably gonna screw it up because I don't have the timing down yet. Because I'm used to it being a little bit shorter, like I said. Breakers used to come here for target practice. Used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I just love how he he's face focused. plants. He's armed. And he's off. Okay. You're not timed or anything, so you really just gotta... 
get your placement perfect. Let's see here. I believe the least amount of shots you can have to get the top prize is like three or four. Let's go with the obvious ones first. Oh, fuck me. There we go. Damn it! Ah! Fuck. I totally fucked it up. Oh! It's on Brad Solid performance. Second prize. It's better than I thought I did. I'm gonna try it again. Oh, five shots. Okay. That's doable. I just gotta get the timing. Kid ain't had enough of the breakers barrier. <sighs> Ow. <laughs> Shit's funny. Okay, ready. It takes practice. And a mighty strong bow helps too. Ooh, yeah, he's saying gotta upgrade that shit. Oh, I fucked it up. I could have done it. I could have done it. Could have done it right there. I couldn't do it. Not good enough. Splat. <laughs> that amuses me. The timing doesn't have to be super perfect. Oh no, come on. Damn it! Okay, fuck it, starting over. I can do this. I forget if there's a way to cancel your shots. What? Ow. <laughs> there we go. Come on now. Mm, can't do it in five. I can do this, I swear. Need to get the timing and the placement. game. Okay. That was an abnormally long loading time. Thought it crashed for a second. Oh! That is with these Bloodborne length loading times all of a sudden. Yes. One more. No! No! 
can do it this time. Yeah, see, that was super short. I don't know what's going on here. Gotta get the placement just right to make sure you hit them both. No, you see? God damn it. Thought occurs. No, wait, never mind. Okay, let's try it from down this way. Yeah, yeah, I am. And you get rewarded with badass music for your trouble. So worth it. I almost don't believe it when he says he passed the breaker's challenge. Sometimes a single look says it all. So yeah, see, like I said, like, we're immediately going back into the game. Can't be too careful these days. Back into gameplay. Not a lot of upfront story, you know? The narrative takes a little bit of its time. Which you can be, of t I'm of two minds about, because, like... Like I said, the uh, actually I don't know if I said this, but the first time I played this, I was kind of like, well, I don't see what now the big deal is. The intersection between bad and wrong. <laughs> this is a really good level, though. Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets, but which one? I forget which one it is, and I want to save that last one to last. Town. Scumbag alley. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. And they just fall off because they're big, stupid scumbags. There he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel the scumbag. Get out of here, squirts. The calamity ain't done much for Gershel's sunny disposition. Oh, Gershel. They always said old Gershel wouldn't go without a fight. There's a special... There's a unique uh, line he gives if you trick him into falling off the ledge and dying that way. Because there's a special narration line for the fucking everything you do in this game. Good. And his city crest won't bring it back. No core, no surprise. Likely gas fellas are hiding it from him. Squirts. He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. <laughs> I like what that implies. Oh yeah. Just about anything. Except for this. Quick for slicing and light enough to throw. Yeah, this is probably my favorite weapon in the game. Like the hammer's fun and all, but can't beat can't beat that DPS. They say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tamed. Squirts don't make the best of friends, but they can be useful in a pinch. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble.
But anyway, as I was saying, you're kind of like, I was kind of like, oh, I don't see what the big deal is. And I actually kind of put the game down because of it. Them squirts just don't know when to quit. Ironically, kind of before the point where the game kind of defines itself, because it does do that. There's a moment that comes where the game kind of sets itself apart from what you might initially expect. Odd place to find the likes of Percy the Snitch. Never much cared for that big wide grin of his. Which is why I don't want to talk too much about what's going on. Because the game really does speak for itself. Somehow that old forge is still standing. God damn. Oh god. Yeah. Inside the forge, Key can fine tune those instruments of his. Here we go. And the cool thing about the upgrade here is. With a good length of me's gut, that bow's like new again. You're not choosing one or the other. You can switch between them whenever you want. And I'm going with 50 per 25% draw speed because that's what I'm used to. And going with... a special surprise in every one of those arrows. And of course, there's special dialogue for whichever one you decide to pick. This fucking narrator. Oh, I need more money. Core ain't here neither, so he's got to guess again. Only one left. Up north is where the gas fella foreman used to live. Tending to his flock. No white gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same thing. This game is such a character action game when you think about it. Like Bayonetta. Uh, that's what a character action game is. When it's locked down tight in an alloy cage. Check. Almost. Looks like he's showboating for the crowd. Help me, squirts. Now a new in town. Oh, they all love me. And then they all die because they love me so much. He hears the whole place groan, but it's too tough to fall. The kid's ready to go, and his ticket out's right where he started. <laughs> a little Zolwood oil and that blade shines like a light. Oh man, all my money's gone now. I like what that's implying about the civilization that once was, where the gas fellas had a foreman and they kind of were integrated, so to speak. Interesting food for thought, at least. He comes back, just like I knew he would. They're not the wild animals. Pack, the monument's calling for it. Is what I'm trying to get at. The windbags used to be alright. Then the calamity took the floor out from under him. 
I forget if and when they mention this, but squirts, gas fellas, and scumbags are all the same species. And, like, squirts are just baby gas fellas. And then scumbags are the grown-up version. I like Pokemon. No oh, scum! Little squirt! Hey, little squirt! Squirty squirt! Uh, come on. Give the little tiger a break. He just so cute, though. What else is there to say? Slap that baby in. Kid does it again. Only fair he decides what we build next. Going with an arsenal. So I can switch between my weapons. Bastion's a place of peace. But we can hold our own if we have to. See, and he's got a unique line of dialogue for every possible weapon combination. I don't know how to get them to trigger, though. <laughs> Like, you can't just sit there and go through every single one to get them to just recite them all off. Picked up traces of other cores while the kid was out. Two new places, and... Like I was saying... Check out this world map, by the way. And like I was saying, like, story ain't gonna happen anytime soon, aside from that narration, so these are just pure gameplay areas. The Wharf District. Folks sail deep into the boundless sea from here. The Bastion. Ceylandia's safe haven. Once the highest point in the city. Too bad it wasn't finished before the calamity struck. The Breaker Barracks. Many straight shooters learned their way here. The Workman Ward. Them windbags used to keep the city humming along here. The melting pot. Place hoarded all sorts of fineries from beyond the boundless sea. The sundown path. Lovely place for a stroll. Before the calamity, that is. Oh, yeah, see, right there. Like I was saying. Okay, game. What's going on? Couples used to walk the sundown path. <laughs> Tumbleweed! Here for pleasure, though. Oh, man, the way he just face plants in every level is so funny. Tumbleweed, no! The floor starts giving way on the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. Friends of the old world reign in the sky.
see the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. And that's why it has security systems, right? Not so much for noise and tomfoolery. It was intended for leisurely strolling, which is why it has fucking security turrets everywhere. Right, stranger? A little bit of foreshadowing. One of them bridges whips the kid along. Finds a spyglass. Like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Now only the stars remain. Fucking power Air shot on a squirt. Always was an iffy proposition. Running out of path. But calamity changed everything, even where the wind blows. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days. those things plenty far away. <laughs> Even gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky. could have survived the calamity. It's an incredibly slow burn, this story. And there's a lot I want to talk about, but it hasn't exactly been revealed yet, so I find myself at a loss for things to talk about. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, I want to talk about so this, but they haven't talked... The time, but that ain't about to stop us. It's a little bit of a spoiler if I talk about that now. Squirt, you're so cute. I'm gonna keep spinning you. Spin! Oh, okay, he doesn't want to spin, okay. The mountains are gone. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we built. See if there's any new drinks. Cinder brick style sure goes down smooth, then stays in your gut like a rock. Yeah, it's every new time you come back. Let's see what a new weapon combination gets us. Kids ready to slice him up and pound him to bits if they get in his way.
Hmm. That's challenge. Trapper Shingle. Only place in the city to go to get certified with a repeater. Let's just go ahead and try that. Even though I suck at the repeater. It's definitely not one of my preferred weapons. No place better than Trapper Shingle for learning to tread light and shoot straight. Trappers had to tread real carefully or else take a nasty fall. Also, they like themselves by clearing out the targets while not clearing out the floor. Also, like all of them, it's a lot easier if you upgrade the weapon first. Any good trapper knows never to take a step till the time is right. So it's not going to happen unless I upgrade it first. <laughs> yeah, see? There's no way I can get that many. To think a rickety place like the shingle survived, and so little else did. Squirt cider will toughen you right up. Too bad about the musty aftertaste. Oh, wait. There we go. Try a new weapon combination, Fang Breaker and the bow. With the bow and repeater at the ready, Kid aims to keep a safe distance. All of these weapon combinations are equally viable, but I have my preferences. Oh, I didn't... I can't upgrade things yet, so... Cause I think I don't have another core. In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. Survive the calamity. It had to be stab weeds. Fuck you, stab weeds. If there's a core, you figures it ought to be deeper down. It cuts down every stab weed like there's gonna be a prize for it. kind of a funny line. Ooh, there it is. One of those fancy cages. No break in a cage like that. But the kid tries anyway. Gotta find a way to spring it open. I must break all the things. Prize? Nope, because there ain't one. Oh. 
Okay. He throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it's gonna take a while to open up. Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. I believe you get more XP for destroying the boxes than you do for. Oh, hey! I wonder why. Stay away from my squirt buddies! My buddies! These scumbags don't take kindly to interlopers. Even some gas fellas take his corner. Oh yay! Pop that mean old foreman. <laughs> At this rate, maybe five more minutes. Maybe thirty. Hard to tell. Must defend my buddies. Squirts get real territorial around the core. Then a ship and a free sample shows up. I believe we lost a squirt and a gas fella. It's a troublesome scene to be sure. A few moments left. Take a few seconds. <laughs> Five minutes. Scores within reach. Oh, my buddy's died. And done. Let me clean up here. There we go. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge. I still remember the look on his face after that one. Dude. 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 I got some spices. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylonia. It was good living here for a while. We ain't much for pleasantries. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. Got our forge. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. This art of the kid is just so cute. I like I was sitting there looking at the thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see here. Turns Faster out those reload. old bones still have some spark in them. That ought to make those fangs sink in nice and deep. Kids' lifelong friends looking fit to keep on fighting. Okay. That should help us do the challenge. 
Whee! A repeater goes with a hammer better than a box of nails. Hardy punch is so zesty, it'll let you carry on through the worst of times. Okay, let's go back and do that repeater thing. Ooh. Should do better now since it does more damage and reloads faster. Which gives us more time and wastes less. Kid decides to keep working his aim and footwork on the shingle. See, now it takes him out in one shot. Or so. Best time to pick a new spot was to swap the magazines. Trappers would have been impressed with how the kid handled the shingle. What else we got? I think that's everything except dead room. Dread rooms brewed from swamp weeds, so its effect is as bold as its flavor. That actually might be more helpful than wear whiskey right now, since I'm not exactly in danger of being low on health. Oh, we made a ten. We talk a little here and there. Ain't much kid can't handle with hammer and bow in hand. <laughs> have upgrade materials for weapons we don't have yet. That's Windbag Ranch. Perfect place to work a blade if you got the stomach for it. The score population is kept well under control thanks to this place. That's kind of fucked up. They're implied to be sentient, reasonably speaking. Windbag Ranch was built for gathering squirt extract and copious supply. That's gross. Ain't nothing more healthful. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck with nothing but a knife. Other folks came to drink and throw knives. Still others used the place to test their finest blades. way I'm getting this. Come back here. Fuck you.
fuck's sake. Place gets awful slick sometimes. Man, that was horrible. Oh my fucking god, stop moving. And I don't know, okay. Cube cuts all of them down soon enough. <sighs> Let's try again. That was a shameful display. Always time for juicy squirts, they used to say. So many of them do. Oh my god, the runners are so fucking aggravating. Best to put them away first before they rile up the others. Oh, fuck you, squirts. Oh, this is unreasonable. I can't do this. Couldn't do it. Stop moving! I can't fucking reach you, douchebag. The ranch was always looking for good help. Yeah, just stay here and kill all the fucking green ones you can while you can. Oh no! They're getting away! Fuck you, green ones! No! At least the blue ones come to you. So it's worth your time just standing still and killing every single green one that pops out first. Oh, you bastard. Oh my god, there's a one more! Oh, that's bullshit. I don't know where it is. What's the time to beat? I bet it's like 60 seconds or something. Yep. Okay, just gotta stand fucking still and kill all the green ones. Just gotta deal with it and There's get every single green one. No! I was wrong! I was wrong! Yep. 
Got ya. Yeah, baby. Kids gone and struck terror in the hearts of squirts everywhere. Except for my buddy. Hi, buddy. Buddy. Oh, he's mad at me. Keep your chin up, kid. I tell him. That's weird. War machines I don't really are use so that. quick. You gotta keep a good grip on them. I don't really throw it that often. So. Okay. Okay, here we go. The hanging gardens. Folks used to go here to relax from their relaxing. Definitely not gonna do a lot of talking in this place. The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kids sees a plane with frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Dun dun dun. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. Oh, little bird. Ash. Look at these little bird. Look at these little birds. Poof. They're gone. It was someone like him. Dun, dun, dun. Sees him there gape in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. Even here, there's security turrets. Many questions after all. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it.
The Jawsons. They didn't make it. Grady Senior, Grady Junior, they didn't make it. But him, he survived. He moved. He's looking up into the sky, which is why his head looks kind of weird. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Dun dun dun. The Ura. And Ceylandia. Hmm. Hmm. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. Survivor. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. <laughs> Implying... Rux here just sent the kid off the instant he showed up without really even telling him what's up, what his fucking name is. But that was then. Things are different between us now. Dun dun dun. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. When you think about it, the kid's getting over old prejudices pretty quickly here. Kid says hello, but Zolf's lost in thought. So, Rux and the Kid are the only two Ceylondians we see in the entire game. And they both have dark skin and white hair. Whereas Zolf has white skin and dark hair. 
I just think that's kind of an interesting little dynamic. Of course, we don't really know if the whole white hair thing is common among Ceylondians, but it's common amongst the two we do see. I think I've done all these, right? Actually, I don't think I've done Fetching Fizz. Fetching Fizz is like a mouthful of nails, but the benefits are worth it. And... And, uh... The repeater and machete, favorite choices of the Ura hunters we once fought. Ooh. That's kind of cool. Let's see, we can upgrade nothing. Let's slot that baby in. The cores. They remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are going to be all right. Will they, though? Will they be all right? Well, look what we have here. The memorial. Here, kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. So these are basically like challenges. When you complete the challenge, then you can build the monument. And it gives you money, basically. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. So, uh, this place just gives you monetary rewards for doing certain challenges throughout the game. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. Well, you guys get to know each other. I'm gonna go find some more things. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. Yeah, cores. So, edge of the city, that's a good thing to note. Look at the map we have here. So, this territory was Ceylandia. Big ass fucking city, Jesus. That's Cinderbrick Fort, where the marshals used to watch over the city. There's Pith Orchard, built in honor of the bull, and folks like Zulf, who pray to him. Okay, I'm gonna do this one, and then cut it. Cut the stream. Uh, I wanna stop it before it gets over two hours, because that's when it, like, cuts the stream in half when exporting to YouTube. And last time I tried to do that, it fucked me. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Oh. Kid says a little prayer anyway. Couldn't hurt, right? Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the Orchard Core is long gone too. Dang it. Seems Pith ain't much of a watchdog. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Oh, the little plushy! I wish they made these in real life. Ah. Uh. Uh, the company who made this game, Supergiant Games, has scumbag plushies, but it doesn't have pith plushies. Or squirt plushies. But a fan of the game 
made a pith plush and the creators of the game saw it and were like, oh, that's really cool. And so when she went to a convention that they were all going to be at, she made a whole bunch of pith plushies and gave them to everyone on the team. So I'm pretty sure there's like eight or ten or so pith plushies that exist in the world. And the team of the game who made this game all own one. All own one. <laughs> stood for something once. Something real. Wish I owned one because I want a fucking pith plushie like you wouldn't believe. In time, though. The bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. I'm eating your apples. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Piff makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Uh oh. Oh, it's going Piff nuts. Lights up like a rodeo. It's going nuts. Ain't easy punching through his hide. Piff breaks into bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. Break the things! So what'll it be? Invoke the gods, or tell them off. So that's something cool the game does. Uh, you can... What are these called? Icons? Idols? Idols. And it actually makes the game harder. We don't have all the gods yet. We only have Pith. So if you invoke the idols, it makes the game harder because it makes the enemies, like, for example, Pith here makes them move faster. But it gives you more yeah. experience. See, we get 10% more experience and 10% more money for having this idol activated. Kid decides to press his button. So it's kind of way faster. Well, if the gods are alive, they must have plenty sword. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Pith put a scare in him. Leveled up. See, paid off already. Stop running. ones. I hate them now because of the fucking proving ground. Oh, old Pits pissy. I want to talk about the gods a little bit in this game, but I've only got Pith so far. And there's not much to say about him. He's just a fucking asshole. <laughs> 
Now we can build a shrine of our own. Though I got some alternatives in mind. No, look. Now he's got a got a tent too. It's a little bit different. The breakers. Ain't no one can outrun them or their arrows. The gravers. The arm of justice. They seemed unstoppable. Unfortunately, we don't have a new core to build a shrine, but hey. That's A. Hey, you're super religious. How do you feel about this fucking blasphemy? Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. The god of order and commotion. All the gods in this game represent two different things. Usually things that are diametrically opposed. Turn them round and round all you like. Pith's still gonna be ugly. Pith in particular, it was apparently the mascot god for the Ceylondian, since, as you've seen, they put his face up everywhere on everything. Representing their love of order. Zolf's the talkative sort. At least he used to be. And, uh... Well, symbolically speaking, the Calamity did strike Ceylandia. The Calamity was quite a commotion indeed. A little bit of irony there. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. I can barely believe he's come this far. Yeah, got a new one. Let's see here. I think I've seen all the ones that we have so far. Yeah, pretty sure. Oh, right. I should change that because I'm not using this. Um, what we have? Don't really know what it's talking about. I like the hand grenade, though. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, this is my favorite one, so we're doing this and then I'm gonna cut. It's the bullhead court. Folks defended themselves there with shields, not words. The Ripplin Walls? Hmm, we've heard that somewhere before. The accused always got a fair shake in Ceylandia. Huh. <laughs> Some used to take the bullhead trial. Survive the trial without taking a scratch. Oh, this is where it gets a little bit tougher. Oh, I still have Pith activated too. The bullhead trial taught folks three things. First, a good defense is a good offense. Second, you gotta always watch your back. Third, ain't no godlike bull up there gonna save you. Gotta get my timing down. Right when they vibrate. Come 
Come on. There we go. Oh! Oh, just barely. There we go. Oh no, I took a hit! No! I'm stupid! I fucked it up. Ah, oh, fuck you, squirt. Fuck. Supposed to do it without taking a single hit. Damn it. The smarter ones knew when to just step aside and let things go. Over the edge. Come on, can we get me? Oh shit. There we go. The kid pulls it off like it was nothing. Oh shit! Awesome! I thought I had to do it without getting hit once. Oh, these big eggs here just give us more money. Coolio. So, hmm, quite a civilized society to practice trial by combat, right? Yeah. There's a hint of pride in his eye when he gets back, and more than a hint for him. Okay, gonna cut things here for the sake of YouTube. Thanks for watching, y'all.